Alright, so we're asked to find x of t for the system, and we're told initially the mass is 0 0.6 meters to the right of the equilibrium position, and moving at 2 meters per second to the right as well. Alright, so looking at this to start off with, we can see it's going to be a force vibration question because we have this forcing um, function applied to our mass. So we're going to go through all the different steps I went through in the previous equations video, um, with the final result obviously being finding x of t for the system. So to start off with, I'm going to draw a free body diagram of my mass. Alright, so putting some forces on here, um, we're going to say that um, I guess the mass is going to move in the positive x direction. So I'm going to dot it in and say that's equal to mx double dot, the direction of the mass times acceleration term. So if this is moving to the right, um, our damper and our two springs are going to try and resist that. So we're going to have cx going back and also K1X and K2X going back. The other force that we need to apply to our system is this um, forcing function F, and we can see it's in the positive X direction, so I'm just gonna put it down here since I'm running out of space. Um, and that completes our free body diagram in terms of what's happening in this X direction, which is where the vibration actually is. So what we should be able to do now is sum our forces to be equal to the mass times the acceleration, Remembering that this is the positive x direction. So forces are the solid lines and the dotted line relates to this ma side of the equation. So we're going to have positive f, this forcing function here, minus cx dot minus k1x and minus k2x. And it's going to equal mx double dot. So now I'm going to try and put everything on one side of the equation which has an x in it and everything without can stay. So basically that's going to mean f equals mx double dot plus cx dot and I'm going to put these together and I'm going to get k1 plus k2x. Now to be able to use my general form of the equation with omega n and zeta I need to normalize it such that I have a 1 in front of the x double dot term. So dividing everything by m I get that. So now I should be able to find omega n and zeta, remembering my equation. Alright, so I have a 1 in front here, which equates to the 1 in front up here. So that means that my x dot term on this side has to equal the x dot term on this side. And the x term here has to equal the x term here. So we should be able to determine omega n and zeta. Alright, so let's start with the x term. So for that we know omega n zeta has to equal k1 plus k2 on m. Okay, and if I scroll back up here we're given all the different values. So, um... 900, 1600, and 250. And that means that I can find out that my natural frequency is 10 radians per second. So now what I need to do is find my damping ratio, and I can use this part, the x dot part. So 2 omega n zeta equals c on m. Okay, so C, substituting into this equation, again it was given up the top, um, I'll just put it in, so it was 5000, divided by 2 times 10, which we just worked out, times the mass of 250. And this works out to a damping ratio of exactly 1. And thinking about the type of motion that this represents, a damping ratio of 1 means we have a critically damped system. Alright, so now we get to move on to the new bit, um, which is where we want to determine our um, equation for x as a function of time, remembering that it's made up of these two parts. 
So this bit is the homogeneous bit due to the free vibration, and this is the particular bit due to the force vibration. So we're going to start with working out um, xp as a function of time, but it doesn't really matter what order you do it in. So we know that xp has to be of the form of x sine omega t minus phi when we have a forcing function of the form f o sine omega t. So you can go through and if you want you can determine x and um, phi are two constants from scratch using your um, so, so methods for solving differential equations. Um, but our purposes, it's a little bit easier just to substitute in from the general form. So we know we have equations for both of these constants, and to save writing them out, I'm just going to shift them up here. So they're the two different forms of the equation for the two different constants, and now it just becomes a case of substituting in. So starting off with x, um, FO is the magnitude of your forcing function, and again I gave it up the top here, it's 6000 newtons. Um, in a second we're going to need this one, which is our frequency of 5 radians per second as well. So 6000. Alright. K tot is the total stiffness in your system, and the easiest place to get this is probably just to scroll back up and look at your um, equation of motion. So if we stop at, say, this line here, it's probably the easiest one to get it from. So this part here, when you have it written in this form, represents the total stiffness in your system. And if you scroll back to your free body diagram as well, um, you know, this is your total stiffness um, in your springs. So I'm going to substitute that in. Let me just work it out individually for a second here. So k tot is going to be k1 plus k2. And we said that these were 900 and 1600, so the total is 2500 newtons per meter. So that's what goes in down here. Okay. So subbing in, um, we said that our natural frequency was 5. Sorry, our forcing friction was, frequency was 5, our natural frequency is 10. And we worked out our damping ratio to be 1. So you can work out this as just a straight number. And in fact it comes to be just 1.92. So doing the same thing now for phi. Um, this comes out to be um, 0.927 for the angle, or the phase shift I should say, in radians. So writing it out, we now know that our particular solution is equal to 1.92 sine of uh, 5t minus 0.927. Alright, that's just filling in this equation up here. Alrighty, so now we need to go back and look at our um, homogeneous part of our solution. And this one goes back to the free vibration stuff that we were doing. And we pick our um, form of our equation based on the damping ratio. So we calculated a damping ratio of 1, which was a critically damp system. So now we just need to copy down of the, the form of, of that type of motion. And of course it looks like this. Okay, so now we just need to work out what our two um, constants are within this equation, a1 and a2, and remember that we have x is equal to xh plus xp, so we can substitute these two in. So now we just need to figure out what our initial conditions are so that we're able to use these um, to find A1 and A2. 
So we need at least two conditions because we have two unknowns. So scrolling back up here, it tells us that x of t, I find x of t for the system, sorry, and initially the mass is at 0 0.6 meters, so that's one thing, um, to the right of the equilibrium position, and moving at 2 meters per second to the right as well. So there are two conditions. So we know that at time equals 0, when our system is released, x is equal to 0 0.6 meters, and it's to the right, which is the positive direction as we've defined it. And again at the release point, we know the velocity, and that was 2 meters per second, again to the right, so it's going to be a positive 2 in here as well. So, I guess to start off with, um, we can use our x um, as a function of time equation to put this first initial condition in. So, substituting it in, we're going to get 0 0.6 equals... So we can simplify this down a little bit, we're going to get 0 0.6 equals, that disappears and we end up with e to the power of um, 0 and anything to the power of 0 is 1. So this is just going to simplify down to a1 multiplied by 1, plus we have some number that this is going to simplify down to and in fact that comes out to be, um, it's actually a negative, let me rub that out then this number here. So from that you can determine what A1 actually is and it becomes 2.137. Just adding these together. Alright, so now we need to find A2 and unfortunately our second condition is in terms of the velocity. So we're going to need to take the derivative of this equation with respect to time to get it in terms of the derivative and then we can actually use our condition. So Taking the derivative of this equation here, so x, its derivative is x dot, which is the velocity, and on this one here we're going to have to apply the product rule because we have time tied up in the bracket and also in the exponent. So for that we hold the first term constant and multiply by the derivative of the second part, so that looks like this e to the power of whatever it is and then multiply by the derivative of what's inside that exponent part. And then we hold the second part constant and multiply by the derivative of this bracketed part and that's just going to be a2. So now we need to take the derivative of the second term here and that's going to be 1.92 sine goes to cos And then we need to multiply by the derivative of what's here, which is just the number 5. So making this look a little bit nicer, um, we can write it like this. Alrighty. So, now we can use our second initial condition within this equation, and that's, we know x dot is 2 when t is equal to 0. So putting that in, now I'm only going to put in numbers for some of these because um, some of them are going to be dropped out of the equation. So we're going to get 2 equals um, e to the negative omega n times 0. Omega n is actually um, 10, and we've worked out a1 already. that's going to drop off okay so simplifying this we get 2 equals e to the power of 0 which is 1 um, this is going to become just 10 times 2.137 as a2 times 0 goes away 
um, and we have of course a2 there as well. So this just becomes that and we can simplify this last term to just be a number and it becomes 1.067. So from this you can solve for a2 and it just becomes negative 2.230. So finally we can go back and actually write out what x is a function of time is um, with all the constants and stuff filled in. So it's just oop, this equation that we can now um, fill in. So scrolling back, it's going to look like this. x is in meters and t is in seconds. So if I just quickly um, show you what that looks like plotted, um, this is what it is. So the blue line is um, xh, our homogeneous part, and remember that we found it to be uh, critically damped. So critical damping it follows this kind of pattern. Um, you never cross over the um, zero line, it just always uh, decreases until it hits um, zero itself. So uh, xp is the uh, red line and that's our forcing function component. Um, you can see it looks like a sine wave which is what we'd expect and it's just going to oscillate back and forth forever. And x is the total, so when you add the other two lines together this is what you get. Um, you can see that we start at 0.6 meters, which was one of our initial conditions, and we also have a gradient on the line at the beginning, which would be um, equal to our um, initial velocity as well. All right, so that's um, all for this question. Um, I'll see you in the next video.